The name terror bird refers to a family of giant flightless predatory birds that roamed many parts of the world called forest racidae. Originally evolving in South America, terror birds migrated into North America and possibly reached Africa. Terror birds are one of the most fearsome predators to roam the earth after the extinction of the dinosaurs. Join me today on Ancient Yoke as we take a look at these amazing animals. Enjoy. Forest racids contain some of the largest flightless predatory birds to ever roam the earth. The family contained the largest apex predators in South America during the Miocene era, like the 8 foot 300 pound forest racos, which is one of the more famous members of the family. Forest racos had very strong legs capable of running at high speeds, small flightless wings, a long neck and a proportionately large head. This ended in a huge hooked beak that could tear through flesh easily or stab into its prey. The lower jaw was smaller than the upper jaw. There were three toes on each of the feet, all of which were armed with sharp claws. Forest racos hunted prey that was smaller than it, unlike many apex predators who hunt prey either larger or a similar size to themselves. It is thought that forest racos, like other terror birds, would use its large feet to injure prey by kicking it and to hold down prey while pecking at it with its large beak. Most experts believe that forest rackers hunted by hiding behind bushes and thin trees, allowing them to pounce on their prey, meaning they were likely an ambush predator. With their long legs, they were able to reach devastating top speeds, meaning they were able to close ground on their prey quickly before they had a chance to react. The idea of terror bird kicking prey comes from how the modern cassowary defends its territory. The cassowary kicks and slashes with its claws, and has even killed people despite them eating entirely fruit. But recent genetic studies show that the terror bird's closest living ancestor is in fact the modern Sarima birds of South America. These birds are actually predators, and although they are capable of flight, they spend most of their time on the ground. Sarima birds hunt by smashing small lizards, snakes, and small mammals into the ground. They also actively seek out hard surfaces like stones to slam prey into, breaking the prey's spinal cord and killing it instantly. It is thought that terror birds could have killed prey like this, but the sheer size and power of the bird's beak would have been enough to kill most of its prey. Terror birds had a wide range of prey to choose from in South America. They were likely opportunistic predators that would attack anything smaller than it. This means that it would have hunted animals like baby ground sloths, small marsupials, and young armadillos and anteaters. Later species like Titanus even hunted small horses. Truly, terror birds ate whatever they could kill, and it is even possible they were kleptoparasites, meaning they stole kills from other predators. 15 million years ago, something began to happen to the world that would go on to change the shape of history of life in North and South America. Beneath the surface, two plates of the Earth's crust were slowly colliding into one another, forcing the Pacific Plate to slide slowly under the Caribbean Plate. The pressure and heat caused by the collision led to the formation of underwater volcanoes, some of which grew tall enough to break the surface of the ocean and form islands. More and more volcanic islands began filling in the area over the next several million years. Meanwhile, the movement of the two tectonic plates was also pushing up the sea floor, eventually forcing some areas above sea level. Over time, massive amounts of sediment, sand, soil and mud were peeled away from North and South America by strong ocean currents and fed through the gaps between the newly forming islands. Little by little, over millions of years, the sediment deposits added to the islands until the gaps were completely filled. Dates vary, but about 5 million years ago, a land bridge had been formed between North and South America. So how is the appearance of a tiny land bridge so significant? Well, this land bridge allowed for something called the Great American Interchange, which is what scientists think could be one of the greatest exchanges of animal life ever. North America was home to deers, horses, elephants, cats, tapirs, bears and camels and all these groups spread south into South America. And on the flip side, giant ground sloths, marsupials, giant armadillos, and bird groups, which included the terror birds, 
spread into North America. Titanus was one of the terribus that lived in North America. Titanus stood at roughly 6 feet and weighed about 330 pounds or 150 kg. Overall, Titanus was very similar to the South American forest racos and Devoncinsia, its closest relatives. However, it differs from these in having a shorter, thicker neck and an overall more heavily built bodily structure. This may have been an adaptation to deal with new predators from North America like saber-toothed cats, jaguars, bears and wolves. It was the introduction of new apex competition and climate change that eventually drove the terribus to extinction. There were some suggestions that forest racids were killed off by human activity such as hunting or habitat change. This idea is no longer considered valid as improved dating on Titanus specimens show that the last forest racids went extinct over 1 million years before humans arrived. However, several fossil finds of smaller forms have been described from the late Pleistocene of South America. Siloptorus, a genus of forest racids standing 2 feet tall, may have been present until 90 to 6300 years ago. Another unidentified smaller type has also been dated to the late Pleistocene, perhaps 18,000 years ago. These finds, if accepted, extend the existence of the smaller members of this group of avian predators considerably. The last true terabird was probably Titanus, which died out roughly 2 million years ago, likely due to the reasons I mentioned before. See, Titanus nested on the ground. The chicks would have required a level of parental care after birth. The extent of this is unknown, but if it's like modern birds, then young would have been raised for a period of months to years by one or both parents. If the nest was protected by one parent, then it would be easy for predators and scavengers to kill and eat the chicks or steal the eggs from the nest when the parent would inevitably need to leave to hunt. Even if nests were protected by two parents, one would need to hunt and one would likely stay behind to defend the nest. Saber-toothed cats were likely pack hunters, as covered in my Smilodon video here. And we know wolves could live in packs of up to 30 members, as seen in my dire wolf video here. So any titanus protecting a nest would be easily outmatched. A combination of being outcompeted, struggling to raise young, and most of all climate change wiped out large terabirds. Thanks for watching today's video. If you liked it and wish to see more, then don't forget to like and comment any suggestions below. Also, if you like to keep track of new episodes coming out every week, then don't forget to subscribe. It really goes a long way to help the channel. Thank you.